boxing, video games, America. As an American who loves boxing video games, we had a plethora of games to choose from. From your fight nights, to your ready to rumbles, to your good Mike Tysons, to your bad Mike Tysons. Even these games called Victorious Boxers. These games are based on a manga called Hajime no Ippo. There are a lot of games in this franchise, but you notice that only three ever came here. The first and the third were on the PS2, and there was one on the Wii. The second one on PS2 is Japan only, and that's the one that has my interest peak. Now, admittedly, I know nothing of this anime and I'm not a big traditional anime guy in general, outside of Dragon Ball and Yu Yu Hakusho and that kid who was solving murders on Adult Swim at like one in the morning. I'm mostly in this for the boxing experience and have no connection to this story or the characters. Maybe that's an interesting angle for this video or maybe you'll wish a quicker death on me because of that fact. In any event, here's Hajime no Ippo 2, Victorious Road. Now jumping into this game, it looks good for the most part. We have fighter introductions, the animations all look good, and so do the arenas. I guess the only thing you can criticize is the character models looking a little odd. I mean, look at this dude. This is a 100,000 yard stare if I've ever seen one. This guy has seen some shit and I ain't just talking about in the boxing ring. You best believe if I had a dude who was looking at me like this, I'm throwing in the towel, I'm throwing in my gloves, I'm throwing in the trunks, I'm throwing in my mouth guard, literally anything that signifies me giving up. I'm straight up power walking my ass out of there. They can also look a little weird when they're moving around with the mocap animation. It kind of comes across as a dude in a mascot suit sometimes. This isn't just exclusive to this game. There are a ton of games that are based on 2D cartoons that struggle to translate into a 3D environment. Shout out to, quite frankly, every early to mid 2000s Cartoon Network and Nickelodeon game. So you can't really give the game too much flack, but let's talk about what's important the gameplay. Now stepping into a fight at first would make you believe your controller is broken. The controls aren't really all that responsive and you do these involuntary movements like you have Tourette's but without the cursing. Bobbing for invisible apples, playing invisible limbo. What the hell is going on here? Well, this is a trap. I went into the settings and changed the left stick to expert instead of default. I don't know why the default movement is this and the expert movement is just moving normally from what I can tell. Next I made one of the top on to sway. This is so we can freely use head movement. And I changed the camera to side fix so we have none of this rotating shit that's going on with the camera work here. And last, but certainly the trolliest, was the left stick is angled at 9 degrees. By default. Like this had to be a prank by one of the developers. I don't see a reason to do this. I angled mine at 90 degrees so left and right can be forward and backwards. After doing all that, we can get into gameplay and this is a pretty damn fun game of boxing. While you can easily assume that the game will have brainless combat, you'd be wrong. Very wrong. This is one of those games that's hard to learn and hard to master. As of this recording, I don't even think I'm good at it yet. You have your jabs, hooks, uppercuts, but using them effectively is rewarding. Different inputs with the punch button get different results, like leaning and throwing a hook will give you this punishing overhand. Pushing the stick in forward then pressing the jab button will throw a step in jab. Sidestepping and throwing a hook is almost guaranteed to get a stumble if you connect with it right. Dead from the neck up, dead from the neck down, but that's life. The boxing gloves themselves are something to get around. Throwing certain punches from certain distances from certain stances could result in you making contact with your opponent's glove or elbow. Once you connect with a big shot, you can either stumble the fighter back or they enter in a dazed state where you have a chance to dish out free CTE. This leads to one of my favorite parts of the game, the knockdowns. Wait, what? A barrel roll? Now you have any kind of knockdown that you can possibly think of. You have your brutal ones. You have knockdowns where the character's T-bowing. You can knock down someone into a Fortnite revive pose. And my favorite, you could just have these guys chicken dancing. Looking like a dizzy bat race competitor, or he was just hit with a sassafras from Ed and Nettie. These bros are on another planet right now. There's special moves in the game too. There are certain punches, combinations, a headbutt, and everyone's favorite boxing move, the ability to slow down time. Missed. 
There's no blocking in this game, or at least that I know of, but I'm fine with it because it keeps the action moving, especially with the head movement. Also, fighters with specific stances like Ippo here can cover a good portion of their face and body with their gloves by default. Combining all this makes the game deeper than initially thought. It's not perfect. My biggest gripe is that there is no stamina system in this game at all. You can start the move slower if you keep using your super moves, but there's nothing to stop you from throwing forever. And the CPU in this game keeps throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing and throwing. I know it was an intentional design choice to keep you in the action, but you should be punished for throwing this many punches and having a percentage that's way lower than my grammar percentage for this very script. What a idiot! Of course, there are minor gripes. When you get knocked down, it's up to the game to decide if you get up or not. And there's no instant replay, which makes getting a thumbnail harder than it needs to be. Come on, Japanese exclusive game that was released two decades ago. Weren't you specifically thinking of me and my YouTube channel when making your game? There's this arcade mode. I think what's going on here is that you're playing through the important fights in the series. The fights are fun, but they have a little bit of a difficulty curve problem. There are certain fights I breeze past, then there are certain fights that take me forever. I guess this is tradition on this channel at this point whenever I play a combat sports game, but when I go up against this guy, he just wrecks my shit. This dude was like the last boss because he's killing me like Isaac Frost. <laughs> hey, that rhymed. After what seemed like forever, I finally beat him, but there were more fights after him and I just beat everyone else rather easily, at least in the first act. Yeah, that's right. This arcade mode is split up into four acts, so there is some content here. But let's get to the main event, Boxer's Road. This is a career mode, a very in-depth career mode. But come on, how in-depth could it be, right? Glucose, amino acid, melanin. Yeah, yeah I've never heard of a fatty acid rating in well, anything. But before we get to that, we create our guy. Here we could choose a start date, and from what I've researched, you can pick a date and those circles are the big moments that happen in the manga. You pick where you're from, I pick the good old USA. Pick your gym and you're dumped into the main career mode. This is the part you may want to get a guide, whether it's this one on Game Facts or one of these other ones. It's optional and you can experiment on your own if you want to. Thankfully, the game is, for the most part, ran in good old English, but you may want to have a handy Google Lens to translate some occasional text boxes. All right. So glucose, meals, a timeline? What is this, Windows Movie Maker? Fighting itself is not really a gigantic emphasis in this mode. It's mostly about getting to the fight itself. You do that by filling up your timeline for the day with a training regimen and a meal plan. This affects your ratings, your fatigue, and your weight. If you are eating a ton of fatty food while lifting weights, you add on both fat and muscle, which may be good for your power ratings, but you have to remember that there are weight classes in this game and you have to stick to one and be on weight. So if you're overweight, you could put on this weight coach mode, but this dude will essentially put you on a damn photosynthesis diet of just water and cardio dioxide. You'll drop weight with this, but your fatigue will skyrocket and your stats will plummet. You wanna see how your boxer fights with a high fatigue rating? Like you've activated bullet time mode in Max Payne. You need to utilize the calendar a little. Having days off a couple times a week can help out with the whole fatigue thing. Also, keep in mind that you are training to fight someone. You can look at a video of your opponent. Oh, let's see what this guy's made of. What the hell is this little dude trying to fight this big guy for? Yeah, that went about as well as I expected. Should be an easy win for me. 
This is number one bullshit. Not only am I getting bodied by half a human, I got very fat and missed weight many times. So we wanted to avoid both of those things preferably. On my second attempt, I experimented a little more trying to find a good meal plan, but it can be a challenge depending on the region. Since I picked the USA, they give me the Joey Chestnut Glizzy meal plan. You can mess around with these sliders and have an automated plan for training and meals picked out for you. But I only recommend this at the start since you have, I think a year before you start taking on fights. Use that time to bulk up. When you do take a fight, pick a decent amount of time to train. This can allow plenty of time to train and cut weight. You can also set up a sparring session on your calendar. What, they let you fight a, a flyweight? Damn, at least I could beat up this small person. So I stay on weight. Until I don't. So I just say, screw it. I've been a cruiserweight this whole time, but now I'm moving up to heavyweight. I mean, look at all these stats and menus. Can you really blame me? Now take a good look at how I bulked up. Have you ever seen a man built like this? Why use a knife to cut something when you could just use the muscles on my back instead? Of course, I flatlined my opponents. I'm pretty sure I just got a vegetable that wasn't a part of my meal plan. So it's looking like I'm destined to be the greatest heavyweight on the face of the earth, but I got lazy and missed weight at heavyweight, which ended my game. How do you even miss weight at heavyweight? That's like getting a hundred year prison sentence and actually living to see the end of it. Nobody was expecting that shit. <laughs> Overall, this career mode is unexpectedly deep and one of the good ones, no matter what sports game it is, the career modes stay formulaic. You'll do some training mini game, play the actual game, sign the occasional contract, and I don't know, get tweets or text messages or some dumb shit like that. This career mode is one of the only games I've seen to have a balance between life choices. You're punished for being lazy. I would have loved to have seen some things added in a future installment. The use of money in general, living arrangements, etc. But Hajime no Ippo would get sequels, just none of them featuring this mode ever again. I guess it wasn't popular? Maybe I'm alone when I praise it, but I don't know. I like it. Overall, this is a nice hidden gem. Any game that lets you look like you took steroids at least five times a day has to be good.